Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a fabulous, fabulous video full of updates to previous videos. This is where I get a chance to include some performances of things that I didn't have on hand at the original point in which I made the video, and I get to respond to your comments and toss out perhaps a couple additional discoveries. In short, it's a whole grab bag of musical delights, and I have a bunch of examples to play you too. And so let's get right to it. Some of you responded very, very favorably to my talk about the Danish composer Knudai Riesire. Absolutely fabulous. And in light of that particular video, I got an entire fabulous Berlitz course in Danish pronunciation, at the end of which I was more positive than I ever had been that I couldn't care less how lousy my pronunciation is because someplace, somewhere, somebody is saying it just like I do. And if they don't, it doesn't make any difference. But here is the one Knudai Resire disc on Da Capo that I didn't have handy at the time that I made the talk. I mentioned it. I said that it existed, but I didn't have it. And I went and got it. And so here it is. This is his violin concerto, an absolutely delightful work in two movements, slow and then fast. And it's it's wonderfully lyrical and spiky and absolutely terrific. If you like Prokofiev's violin concertos, for example, then you're going to love this one. But the really cool thing is the ballet Etudes, which also exists on Chandos in a slightly slower performance than this one with Gennady Rostezvensky. But I wanted to play you a sample of it because it's just so much fun. It's based on Cherny Piano Etudes. And it's really a ballet about ballet. I mean, you know, the plot is somewhat rudimentary and it doesn't make any difference because that's true of every ballet actually when you think about it isn't it there's always some moment where you know the plot stops and they all just come out and dance right i mean that's the ballet part like the whole second half of the nutcracker you know off they go to fairyland and clara and the prince sit there and they just watch people dance that's act two so this is all about that and it's just delightful. And in here, I'm going to play you a little bit of it. There is a grand pas de deux romantique that has a big initial entree and then a continuation and then a final thing. And I'm going to play you the final thing from the ballet etude. This is, this is the Aarhus Symphony Orchestra conducted by Andreas Delfs. And my goodness, it's marvelous and wonderfully recorded. Again, it's Da Capo and it's Knudai Resire, who I know is going to be the next big thing in Danish music. He's right up there with like marzipan. It's absolutely fantastic. Here you go. Wasn't that lovely? Just beautiful, beautiful music. A terrific composer. One of the great ballet music composers, for sure, of the 20th century. And these are delightful, delightful works. The Da Capo series deserves the widest possible currency. So that's update number one. And we have five in all. Number two. Oh, yes. This will be quick, although it's a lot of music. I remember remember my video on the Monteverdi Vespers. I had like 15 of those suckers sitting around. And of course, I as soon as I limited myself to the ones that I had, you guys all mentioned all the ones I didn't have. 
And I know, I know, there are just lots and lots of good ones because the Vespers is really sort of the great sacred work between the Renaissance a cappella style and then the the high Baroque, you know, the Bach stuff that came about a hundred years later. And nobody much cares about anything that came between. I mean, there are a few things here and there, but basically that is the iconic work of the early proto-Baroque sacred music. And it is, and of course it's wonderful. I mean, it's so glorious. And everybody wants to do it because you can really put your stamp on it. There's so many options for how you do it. And so I went and to the overflow room and got a pile of ones that I hadn't mentioned. Four more, in fact, that are absolutely first class. I mean, they really are. It's another one of those works. It's like the B minor mass. It's been extremely lucky on disc. I think because when people do it, they give 100%. And the result is just really, really special quite often. So in no particular order, these performances are Rinaldo Alessandrini and Concerto Italiano. This is a naive and it's, it's you know, one of those wonderful. I talked about how much I enjoy Mediterranean performances of Mediterranean music like Jordi Savals and all that stuff. Well, this is even more vigorous than that is, and it's it's very exciting. It's lots of fun. And then I have, oh, William Christie with Les Arts Florissants, someone who you can always count on to combine scholarly rectitude with genuine musicality and a certain sensitivity to the setting of words. Christie's a wonderful artist and, and his group is terrific and they give a very, very beautiful performance. This is on this was on Irato Veritas. Used to be Virgin Veritas, but now it's Irato Veritas. Don't ask me why. It's it's a long story. Oh uh, yes, and then we have Monteverdi Vespers with Suzuki. Yes, is that is it? Yes, Masaki Suzuki with the Bach Collegium Japan. This is also first class, absolutely first class, and you get on this one. I mean, because, you know, BIS always packs their CDs full of stuff. That's one of the things that I love about this label. They really do. They give you value for money. When you pay full price, you know you're getting a full disc. Well, this gives you all of the Vespers music. You get the Mass in Ilo Tempore, and you get both settings of the Magnificat. And so that's really, really a good deal. I mean, I'm trying to think about, look at this and see how what the timings are on the discs. One is like 66 and one is 61 or 67. There's really no reason to not have everything if you're going to break it up over two discs because it fits and it fits here. And these performances are as fine as their Bach recordings, which are absolutely first class. Beautiful performance of the Vespers. Finally, René Jacob. This is another really, really, really great performance of the Vespers. It has a lot of fans. It's on Harmonia Mundi. It's splendid. Now, since Pius or P-A-I-S or whatever that thing is called, play it again, Sam, is what it stands for. P-A-I-S got Harmonia Mundi. Um, strange things have been happening with the Harmonia Mundi catalog and availability has been extremely spotty. But if you can find this, it's absolutely wonderful. So there are four Monteverdi Vespers. Now, I have one other update that is not involving music specifically at all. This is an update to my talk on the uh, classical music record industry. Remember we were talking about who owns what? Well, Klaus Heymann from Naxos saw the video and he was more than happy to write in and clarify the position of not only Naxos, but also some other stuff that was going on in the industry. And this is what he said, which is very, very interesting. He writes, Sony BMG no longer exists. BMG sold the record business to Sony and the publishing to Universal. BMG then started again a few years ago as a rights administration company. So Sony BMG is gone and all that's left now is Sony using the RCA logo for some of its releases and things, but it's all Sony. That's very interesting. Now, SWR, that's Sudwestfunk Radio, 
from Germany is managed by Naxos, and Naxos also distributes BR Classic, which is which is the you know Bavarian state, you know Bavarian radio label that has all of that stuff coming out. Finally, owned labels that Naxos owns, aside from Naxos and Marco Polo, are Ondine, Orfeo, Ohms, Capriccio, Dynamic, Proprius, Profone, and Swedish Society. This is actually news to me. I didn't know all of these labels. I'm very happy about Capriccio because there's a lot of stuff on Capriccio. Now I know I can play his samples. So that's fantastic. Own video labels that Naxos owns are Opus Arte, Dynamic, most of Bel Air, Naxos, which is growing itself, and Belvedere. So that's really, really marvelous. And Mr. Heyman advises us also that starting later this year, all the new Naxos recordings will be produced in both audio and video because he believes probably with good reason, given the response I've had to my own videos, that video is becoming more and more important. And so there you go. That is a little addendum to the talk about classical labels. And I've learned something, and I'm sure you have as well. Now, back to the music, the five music updates. We talked about fluff. Remember fluff? Massinet, fluff, fluffy Massinet. This Yarvi recording on Shandos, this is relatively recent, and it's quite, quite splendid. You know, Yarvi is great with this stuff. You know, he just lets it all hang out and goes for it. And it's with the Orchestre de la Suisse Romande. It's beautiful. And you get, let's see, the ballet music from Le Cid, which is one of those wonderful fake Spanish things that French composers do so well. And you get The Last Sleep of the Virgin and the Overture to Le Roi de la Horre which uses a saxophone, at least the opera does. I don't know about the overture. I don't think, I couldn't remember. Well, anyway, maybe. And the fantasy for cello and orchestra with, with Truls Mork playing the cello and the overture to Phaedre and the scene religieuse from Les Erinius, the Furies. Remember how much fun that was? I played you a bit of it. Very, very cool. And the entre-acte, the entre act from Don uh, Don Cesar de Bazan, the entre act Sevillana. It's a Sevillana. Oh yes, and finally the Saint Pittoresque, one of the orchestral suites. A lovely new Massenet disc. So if you're buying Massenet and you enjoyed those four or five Naxos discs and want more, that doesn't really duplicate what's on the Naxos discs. A little bit it does, but not not much. This is definitely worth thinking about. Next, one of the videos that got a lot of play as well was my talk about Strauss's four last songs. Now, because every soprano in the universe has done the four last songs, you expect to get a lot of, a lot of attention. And I did. And I was very grateful for it because there was one amazing discovery. First, I just want to point out that I've always had this one sitting around, and it really is very, very good. A lot of you like it. That's Renee Fleming with Eschenbach, her first recording of the Four Last Songs, not her remake, her first one when she was in Fresher Voice. It's very, very beautiful. And you get, let's see, a, the Rosen Cavalier Suite and a bunch of orchestral leader as well. One, two, three, eight, four, five of them. It's, it's a beautiful disc. It really is a beautiful disc. But here was the big surprise. One of you mentioned that the Four Last Songs was recorded by Martina Arroyo with Gunter Vond. Now, Gunter Vond, I mean, I've had this just sitting around forever. I don't know, you know, you know, you, I get a lot of stuff. Sometimes I don't focus or I don't get a chance to listen to them very thoroughly. And this I didn't pay much attention to, but it's one that you, I really should have because, first of all, you got, you get Mozart's 20th Piano Concerto with Rudolf Fierkusny. Fierkusny, pardon me, and the four last songs with Arroyo and the Strauss first horn concerto with Hermann Baumann. I mean, it's a great lineup of soloists and it's with Cologne Radio, I believe, yes, the Kölner Rundfunk Symphony Orchestra under Gunter Vond. It's a radio recording and very, very fine sound. But this four last songs, as the commentator pointed out, is really special. I mean, Martina Arroyo was one of the great voices of the 20th century. She was a little bit eclipsed by being sort of uh, compared to Leontine Price as, 
you know, America's great African-American Verdi soprano, but her voice was, I mean, in many ways, her voice was more beautiful than Price's, and she was an incredibly elegant singer. I mean, one of those one of those singers with tremendous poise and and a wonderful musicality with phrasing, with diction. My God, her German is terrific in this performance. I want to play you a little bit because it's on the Profil label, and so I have permission to do so. It is extraordinarily beautiful. It's exactly what the commentator said. Completely effortless, totally without affectation, incredibly incredibly sensitive to the text and to the musical line. It's just, oh boy, this was a find. It is really a find. It is the Gunter von Edition, volume 16, if you're curious. Is that what it says here, volume 16? I think so. I mean, someday I'm going to get like my magnifying glass when I do one of these talks so I can actually, actually see what it says. Yes, volume 16. And Martina Arroyo is just one of those singers. She didn't make all that many recordings. She didn't make as many recordings as her range and her, her voice deserved. And so when you can find one, and in Strauss, I mean, she never did any Strauss that, that she recorded. She was a Verdi soprano, supposedly, as was Price, who also did, by the way, a very good four last songs. But, but this is really, really special. So I'm gonna play you a bit of Fruiting, the opening. Just listen to it, it's, it's glorious. deal. Of course, I get so excited, I knock these things over. I just I just knocked Renee Fleming across the room with Martina. <laughs> but seriously, this is hot. This is really hot stuff. And the Mozart with Kuzni is terrific. And the Strauss horn concerto with Hermann Bauman. And the accompaniments are great because it's Gunter Vond. The Strauss, you will never hear the orchestral part of the Strauss played so clearly and cleanly with such with such precise rhythm and beautiful balances. Maybe you heard that right at the beginning of Fruling. You know, you know how it's usually kind of murky and muddy. It's you know, it does that. Not here. <clears throat> here it's absolutely cleanly delineated and shapely and melodic and beautifully balanced. Vond was just a master of great internal ba balances within an ensemble. I mean, he really worked on that. And boy, does it show, even in this music. It's good. And with Arroyo singing, wow. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning it. I love you, dear commentator person. This was fabulous that you brought it up. However, we're going to wrap it up with a double update. It's an update to two videos I did. One was, you may recall, sequels to Das Lied von der Erde. And the other was, was Irvin Schulhoff. Just a disc about, I mean, a talk about Irvin Schulhoff and his first couple of symphonies. It's this thing on Orfeo, which is owned by Naxos, so I can play you a sample. This is one amazing disc. This disc features Doris Soffel, mezzo-soprano, Michael Rischa, piano, you know, he who was doing the uh, C.P.E. Bach piano concertos on, on um, Hensler, and also the Deutsche Symphony Orchestra Berlin under Gerd Albrecht. And it contains two early, but not immature, works by Schulhoff for, for mezzo, contralto or mezzo, and orchestra. He calls them symphonies. Symphonies 
for for uh, let's see, symphony for alto and orchestra, and symphony for mezzo soprano and orchestra. The one for mezzo is called Landschaften or landscapes, and the one for for alto and orchestra is called Menschheit or humanity. These are gorgeous, fin de siècle, exotic, kind of like Schrecker, Korngold, Zemlinsky, decadent, world-weary, nihilistic, expressionist poetry things. They are gorgeous. And no one knows them. No one has heard them. They were early works. They were just re rather recently recovered, apparently. And they are spectacular. I'm going to play you the the opening of, or maybe the second song. I don't even remember which one it is. But it's part of Menschheit. Just listen to this. This, by the way, comes with the text, but not the translations. And so all I know is that they're singing about stuff. Well, I mean, this song is about, it has a bagpipe in it, a doodlesock. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I get the words. I can translate the German if I wanted to, but frankly, the music is so pretty, I don't even care. When I first got this disc, uh, disc a few years ago, I actually did look and try and figure out what the poems meant, but I'll be damned if I could remember. And the music is just amazing. So let's listen to a bit of Menschheit. Oh, yes. And Schrecker, you know, he was such a chameleon. His style underwent so many, so many transitions in such a brief period of time from his from his decadent late romantic style to his Dadaist style to his experiments with jazz to his communist socialist realist stuff. I mean, all in a very short period of time. He really was a, a, a shapeshifter musically, because this disc also contains something from his next phase, a fabulous suite of incidental music to the bourgeois gentilhomme, Der Burger als Edelmann. And this production he had a little tiny ensemble of piano, seven winds, and percussion. It's just great. And I'm going to play the second dance number in the in the suite it's you're gonna it, you can tell you can't tell it's the same composer but we're moving toward the style of Schulhoff in his first symphony with that sort of sort of jazzy brittle neoclassical style mixed with Czech folk music and here is that completely utterly different totally different universe than we hear in in Menschheit and Landschaften so here we have the bourgeois gentilhomme, incidental music.
great stuff. And it's also worth pointing out, if you really like it, it's been recorded before. There's one on Channel Classics with, uh, I think, the Ebony Band, where they did a bunch of these Schulhoff jazz-inspired type works. So you can get it that way, too. This is available. It may be hard to find, but it's available. I know it's available. Or at least, you know, it is on certain from certain companies and services. But uh, it, again, it's Gerd Albrecht, Dara Soffel, Michael Rischa, and the Deutsche Symphony Orchestra Berlin. This is a sleeper of a disc. You will find yourself spellbound by this music, and you'll want to hear it over and over and over. And I am so happy that I had the opportunity to be able to bring it to your attention now. So those are the updates, my friends. Thank you for joining me for this particular video. So much good music in here. And these are all accessories, ancillary to the main videos in question. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, there's just a limitless supply of this stuff. And it is such a privilege and a pleasure for me to be able to tell you about it. So keep on listening. Take care. Talk to you soon.